Vincent, it's an incredible industry at the best of times. And on Monday, the CEO of Eurocali, one of the potash companies, was arrested at Minsk airport. There are cartels. It's a very complicated business. What's going on in potash? Well, it's just one damn thing after another, really. Um, <coughs> it is very complex. Um, what has happened in the last month is that um, Ural Kali, which is the world's biggest potash producer, it's based in Russia, it has withdrawn from this sort of marketing arrangement that it had with its sister company in Belarus. There are two huge potash producers. Um, Russia, Belarus and Canada produce about 90% of the world's potash. And there are three companies in the Canadian cartel. Exactly. There's a, there's a Canadian cartel as well that, that, um, that is a kind of rival. But uh, so anyway, one of these cartels, the Russian one, is collapsing. And that's causing all kinds of friction. And on Monday, the CEO of Ural Kali was arrested at, or at least detained anyway, at, at um, Minsk airport after having talks with the prime minister. And that's, it's very bizarre. And it seems on um, a casual reading that it's the classic problem with cartels is someone gets greedy and, and, and tries to um, break it or go outside it. So I guess the question is, is there any chance that the Belarusian cartel, the Russian cartel, can get its act together and get a uh, handle under prices again? Um, I, I, well, it may very well reconstitute um, because it's, you know, it's this political as much as anything else oper um, or, um, arrangement. Um, but whether it can have the influence of old, I seriously doubt. Um, the, uh, the Ural Kali wants to produce more potash rather than to charge higher prices for what it produces now. Um, and it thinks it can <coughs> do much better that way. Um, and there is new potash coming on stream in Canada that's also outside the Canadian cartel. So there, you know, the competition in the potash sector is actually increasing. Um, and I think that's going to have um, fairly dr dramatic ramifications for the industry as a whole, and, and particularly on the Canadian side, actually. And a lot of this is done on a contract basis. There isn't a global traded price as such. What mm. does it mean for the prices of the companies that investors can get involved in in Canada, for example? Well, I think that, that it raises questions over both earnings and valuations. I mean, valuations have already tumbled by 20% um, after the Ural Kali move a month ago. But earnings, I think, are really up in the air now. I mean, the guy who was arrested the other day um, has predicted that the price of potash could fall from $400 a ton to $300. That's a 25% fall, right? I presume that means a 25% fall in earnings. And you know, very few companies can afford to see that happen. Um, so I think that, that some of the industry's players are very vulnerable. The bigger ones, like Potash Corporation, like BHP Billiton, can probably absorb some of this. But a lot of the smaller players out there could be in trouble. Well, it sounds like it's been a very cozy relationship for quite a while. It's coming to an end. Thank you very much for that, Vincent.